Hey all, Johnny Mullet here with another video. Today, this is part two of the bus breakdown video. Um, if you've seen my last video, my bus broke down while we were on a bicycling trip. And on the way home, it just shut off. And it was in a sketchy place on a hill with lots of traffic. And this is the thing that every schoolie person dreads. Is basically when you see this. So yeah, every schoolie person dreads that because they know to tow a large school bus, it's going to cost a lot of money. And yeah, it costed me 400 bucks to tow that thing 40 miles, which isn't bad considering what it is. It could have been a lot worse. And it could have been a lot worse if I was messing around down there on the highway trying to fix it and the parking brake failed while I was under the bus or something bad could have happened. But anyway, we're going to go out here and diagnose the problem. Um, I was able to get the blink codes out of the system. I wrote them down. I had a sheet with all my codes, and I had an ECM communication between the ECM and the IDM. So basically, one computer could not communicate with the other computer, and that was the whole problem. And the first thing I checked was the battery fuse boxes. So let's go out there and check it out, and I'm going to show you exactly what we're looking at. All right, so here we are outside with my trusty Geo that got me here to the... Uh, the bus so I can figure out what's going on and as you can see Thunder is sitting right here so you got the wheels blocked because the dry shaft is out of it so on the side of the road when I was broke down I got the codes out of the system and the first thing I checked was down here now you'll find this with most uh, international older electronic bus engines or truck engines that there's usually a fuse for the injector driver module and a fuse for the ECM and both of those were good so I knew my problem was further up so as any mechanic would do who's familiar with these you would check the wiring coming under the vehicle from the battery box and this wiring comes up through the front and making sure you know it wasn't rubbing on the frame or something like that and I couldn't find a problem there so that's the reason I towed it to the shop, because it was going to take more diagnostics. So as far as diagnostics go, we're going to go inside the bus. And a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of these buses are equipped with an engine diagnostics button. And you can get the codes out of the system if there's a problem. All you have to do is turn the ignition to the on position press and hold that button for about five or six seconds and come over to your cluster and the oil water light will come on and then the yellow um, check engine light will start flashing a series of codes and it'll give you a three digit code for instance one two three you know or four eight seven or whatever and if there's more than one code the oil light will flash and then give you the second code then the oil light will flash, give you the third, and so on. And if it starts repeating itself, then you have all your code numbers. So I sat here with a pen and paper on the side of the road yesterday and wrote down the flash codes. I kept getting a 543, I got that one twice, 325, 223, and 622. So that told me the 543 was the most important code and probably the cause for the other codes. And... I got my book out, I figured out what the codes were, and I knew I had a communication problem. So here at the shop, I actually hooked the scanner up to it, and I got the same codes, the 543, the 223, the 622, and the 325. So, okay, we have a communications error. I need to figure out what's going on. So let's go outside, and I'll show you what I've found in here. So... I had to look onto the wiring diagrams on the computer online. Sometimes you get lucky and find them on Google too. If you do an image search for wiring diagrams, you can find them. So I pulled the cover off of here and this is the ECM. And I went ahead and figured out that this was ground here, here, and here. And the power wire was right here. So I unscrewed this until it eventually came out. I took my test light and I found out I had power and ground 
As a matter of fact, this ground comes right to here to the firewall. That's where I have my test light hooked up. So with no problem at the ECM, I moved on to the IDM over here, which is an injector driver module. So I'm gonna hop up here without dropping the phone. Okay, here we go, injector driver module. Hopefully you can all see this. So, I went ahead and did the same test. I looked up the wiring diagram for this injector driver module. Sometimes you can get lucky and the Ford 96 power stroke is the same, but the colors might be different. Well, these two big wires here are your main wires going into the computer. This white one here is the ground, so that grounds the computer. And this purple one here, that's your main power juicer. And that number there is a 97 AG. So I tested this by removing this bolt like the other computer, pulled it out, and there was no power here. I'm like, okay, that's not good. So I followed the wiring harness down, and I found out the, the, this big purple wire went that way. So over here, I found it. And there's some relays up here. And if you look right there, there is your 97 AG. So this was the relay it was plugged into here on the firewall. I unplugged it, tested it, no power. Okay, so I gotta see if this relay has power. So I tested the other terminals and I had juice coming in to the relay, but when the key was switched to the on position, it wouldn't power up the 97 AG. So I grabbed the relay, this is a five prong relay, and I stuck it in there, I turned the key back on, and stuck my test light right in there, and, it, and wouldn't you know it, it lit up. It lit up, I had power. I was like, you gotta be shitting me, right? It was just a relay all along. So, I came back over to the computer, I hooked my test light with the key on to the big purple wire, and it lit up, we had juice. So, let's go into the bus and uh, see what happens here. So now that I've verified that I have power to the computer, I'm going to use my scanner here, and we're gonna go ahead and turn the key on, and we're gonna clear all these faults and see what happens. So let's see what happens here. We're gonna clear the codes and go from there. Okay, maybe not. Oh, hello. I'm trying to look at it under the phone. Yes. Look at that. I have no more faults. No inactive and no active faults. So, guys, the moment of truth is here. Let's start this bitch up. Come on, Thunder. Please run. Oh, my God. It's alive. It's alive. Oh, yes. This makes me happy. She's running. So there you go, guys. Thunder is alive and well. She's running. I am so happy. Um, so right now, I'm going to go out there, and uh, I ain't going to waste time talking to you guys anymore. I'm done. I'm going to get the bus going. So i got to put the dry shaft back in it, and I'm going to drive it home. It was weird last night without the bus in my driveway, and I step outside and there's no bus there. And it's, it was just a weird feeling, and that's all going to change now because the bus is fixed. So, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Maybe you learned something today. So, see you next time.